All right, and then Acts chapter 9, we find a man by the name Saul of Tarsus who was called Paul the Apostle. He got filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 9, verse 17. He also had utterance. Then in the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, put that up for me. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the word, which had the word. Next verse, and next verse day of the circumcision which believe were astonished as many as came with peter because that on the gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost house of cornelius so two things we have seen acts chapter 2 verse 4 they spoke we have seen acts chapter 8 from peter's comment they spoke we have seen acts chapter 10 they spoke utterance Paul in Ephesus, Acts 19, laid hands on 12 people, they prophesied. Utterance, utterance. So, we have four examples plus Paul making it five. That people who were filled with the Holy Ghost spoke. You can't be filled with the Holy Ghost and be quiet. What kind of dumb Holy Ghost is that? When people got filled with the Holy Ghost, all over scripture, they spoke. They spoke. In other words, utterance is an evidence of the infilling of the spirit. Utterance is an evidence of the infilling of the spirit. Utterance is the evidence that there's a speaking thought that happens by the Holy Ghost. There's a speaking thought that happens by the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I have the Holy Spirit. I speak thought in the Spirit. Yeah, there's a speaking thought. And we say that speaking in tongues, new tongues, other tongues, another tongue, tongues play a multi-dimensional function. You remember that? It plays a multi-dimensional function. And then we see it's a proof. Tongues is a proof of all the utterance gifts. Tongues is a proof of all the utterance gifts. That's why I said, I said to you, when you perfect the exercise of utterance gifts, you will lay hand on revelational gifts. When you perfect the exercise of all trans gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, you will lay hands on word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Is that what happened? On the day of Pentecost, they spoke in tongues and what? They prophesied. Stay with me. Notice. Acts 10, same thing. Acts 19, they spoke and prophesied. The same way tongues came forth is the same way all other utterance gifts come forth. The same way you speak in tongues by faith is the same way you prophesy. Is the same way you interpret tongues. Same way. Same way. What are the utterance gifts again? Can I hear you say them to me? One, two, go. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. And prophecy. So if you can speak with tongues, you can speak the interpretation. Same breath. If you can speak with tongues, you can prophesy. Same breath. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4, brother Paul calls them endowments endowments of the spirit look at put it up for me chapter 12 verse 4 now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are endowments endowments look at me everybody how many of you have mouths if you have a mouth let me see your hand up okay okay how many of you use your mouths for many things for many things you use your mouth for many things. Let me see your hands up. 
Okay, put up. You, you use your mouth for only one thing. Let me see your hands up. I'm talking unnaturally. Sometimes you use your mouth to do all kinds of things. To eat. To eat. To talk. Eh? You use your mouth for beauty. Beauty. To laugh. To fight. Use your mouth for fighting. If hands are not helping. Ah! Yeah, so they, yeah! The weapons of our warfare. <laughs> so the mouth is multi-purpose. That is why it is multi-purpose in the operation of gifts. You use the mouth for tongues. You use the mouth for interpretation. You use the mouth for prophecy. You use the mouth for word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Those are revelation gifts, but they flow via utterance in some cases. So if you speak in tongues, you can speak the interpretation. You can prophesy. It's the same ability. That First Corinthians 12, 4, that word gift is the word endowment. An endowment is something that is yours. An endowment is something that naturally belongs to you. Naturally. So gifts of the spirit are the abilities resident with the Christian. They are with the believer. They stay with the believer. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. First Corinthians. Now concerning spirituals brethren. I will not have you ignorant. Concerning pneumaticus. Pneumaticus. Things of the spirit. I will not have you ignorant. So we see Paul describing the things of the spirit. And he mentions nine of them. We have three classifications. Can you help me name the classifications very loud? Number one, classification. All trans gifts, number two. Revelation gifts, number three. Power gifts. Now let's list the all trans gifts. One, two, go. One. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Prophecy. What about revelation gifts? Word of wisdom. Word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. What about power gift? I mean, gifts of, yeah, power gifts. Healing, working of miracles, faith, correct. So those are the classification of the nine gifts of the spirit resident, the endowments, the abilities that are inherent in everyone that is born of God. All of them. All of them. They don't visit you. They are in you permanently. You wake up, they are there. You sleep, they are there. In the dream, they are there. Those are your abilities. Our vision is to reintroduce Jesus to this generation for believers to be equipped to know who they are in Christ. What they have. These endowments are what you have in Christ. You have the gifts of the spirit. You have utterance. And you have revelation. And you have power gifts. All of them. Resident and at work on your inside. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Now we are still studying the all trans gifts. I hope you know that. So now in 1 Corinthians 14. Brother Paul does an exhaustive study on things of the spirit. He says number one. Prophecy is for edification, exhortation and comfort. Now let me ask all of you. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. Three things or what? Are they three? What are they? One. One. Edification, therefore, will be what? Exhortation and comfort. It's one. It's not three things. So prophecy is for edification. And when edification comes, it produces comfort an exhortation. So edification is defined by comfort and exhortation. 